topic uh, is still trying to reposition or position palm oil uh, in the global market as well as the uh, Vietnamese market, uh, considering that palm oil is already mentioned as the major or uh, the most popular oil uh, in your current market. So thank you very much for this opportunity. I will uh, try and justify why palm oil uh, has to be the solution to your opportunities or to your even problems. Uh, as my minister tried to suggest, there are opponents of palm oil who are not happy. They are trying to make palm oil part of the problems. We are here to tell you that palm oil is part of the solutions. So, uh, you see these green bars already reflecting a very strong growth trend uh, in uh, palm oil as part of the world oils and pets production from 1990 to 2012. So you can see the green bars uh, playing, its, playing the role of being the dominant oil produced. Uh, the yellow bars representing soya oil has been overtaken somewhere in 2006 uh, or even earlier. So now we are looking forward to the dominant role that palm oil is playing in the world oil and fat production. And as we are uh, planning or looking, projecting major consumption demand by uh, Vietnam in the years to come, obviously we have to take notice of the dominant uh, source of supply provided by farm. And these are the detailed figures. Uh, what we do, we will upload these statistics in MTOC website, which I will show at the end. So as soon as you want uh, you can up, download these uh, details uh, at your own time and own cost uh, when you're back in office. So uh, nowadays with digital communication, uh, everything is accessible through the internet. Uh, for that reason, all the publications and information related to palm oil uh, on the market would be available as far as we are concerned, on our website, Palm Oil Council website, uh, where we digitalize everything and upload there so that others can download. So including uh, lectures presented today by uh, most of the presenters. So when it comes to consumption, it's also the same story. Uh, the consumption pattern has been very strong upwards because of population growth coming to reach 9 billion people by 2042, 40, 2042 or 43. So that increase in population number, not really shown here is in red, but different scale, it looks rather suppressed. But uh, if drawn to a comparable uh, scale, I suppose it will look like the uh, red line which represent uh, GDP or gross uh, product also increasing meaning a lot more purchasing power consuming uh, consumption will continue to therefore be driven by increased consumption and population uh, that is very uh, well known but in terms of countries we can see two patterns here. Rich countries consume a lot of oil. Highly populated countries also consume a lot of oil. So we have this combination, China and India, with billion over people consuming a lot of oil. Uh, and uh, US and EU with a very high per capita income also consuming a lot of oil. So, of course, most countries will try to produce
produce their own oils. No, no country would like to import uh, if they can. But because oil production, oil, vegetable oil production is given lower priority compared to rice or staple food production, so the ability to produce enough for local consumption of oils and fats is often uh, hampered by lack of priority in allocating land. Land is allocated first for food crops or staple food crops like uh, all the cereals. So most countries tend to be uh, importers or even net importers, which I will show later. And that includes Vietnam. You can try to be uh, sufficient in all commodities that you need. You may be uh, mentioned earlier uh, excelling in producing certain commodities, but for some other commodities, it would not be possible to be sufficient. Malaysia excel in producing palm palm oil. Uh, we don't. We are not self-sufficient in producing rice. We deliberately make a policy to import at least 30 to 40 percent of our rice consumption, which I think we import from Vietnam also. And therefore, we use the export revenue from the export of palm oil to pay for imports of rice and other commodities, of agricultural commodities. So this is to maximize and optimize our land use and maximize revenue in order to be able to afford imports of food. So I think all countries <coughs> and countries will try to do that, uh, harmonizing their ability to produce and export while using the revenue to uh, import the other necessities. Um, so you can see here, as I said, Europe and USA, uh, both are highly populated, but also high, uh, very rich, and they import a lot. Uh, but India and China are naturally uh, big populous countries, and they need a lot of oil. And other countries, India, Bangladesh, Nigeria, also highly populated, they somehow do not uh, have a very high per capita consumption yet, but they too are competing to import uh, palm oil, especially to meet their shortages. So that pattern uh, overall can be uh, uh, translated here in the 2012, for example, Europe, yeah, sorry, US and EU consuming up to 55 kg, 59 kg per capita <clears throat> and compared to developing countries way below 15 to 25 KG for India and China. So uh, Vietnam is quite uh, high uh, but also likely to increase as well. Consumption of palm oil versus other oil again to emphasize the growth trend um, taking place for palm 1990, we had a share of consumption of only 14%. This increased to 19% by 2000, and by 2012, it is already doubling the market share, meaning absolute volume is even more than double. Uh, so, it becomes now recognized that palm oil is the largest produced oil, vegetable oil in the world. Uh, it overtook soya by 2004. Now, I saw the chart presented by a previous speaker, Albert, uh, that showed soybean taking up a small uh, share of the market consumption. Uh, basically, all this oil, if they are combined or blended, they would, very, we would make a very perfect uh, healthy oil, which I will come to verify later in my presentation. So there is no real competition. We are talking about all these oils are uh, uh, individually good, but in combination or in blend, they are even better. And therefore, uh, the 
real strategy is to ensure sufficient supply of oils and fats for the food as well as non-food uh, industry in a particular country like Vietnam. So, uh, the availability issue has been mentioned. Uh, our low cost leads to us being competitive. Uh, high yield is uh, contributing to that low cost. Versatility is contributing to in improvement or increment uh, in all kinds of food application and even non-food application. So palm oil becomes very versatile, middle of the road oil that suits uh, the requirements of most uh, industries or, fact, uh, or consumption uh, requirements. There are, there are details about how palm oil will be uh, applied in different applications at the next or subsequent presentation or a presentation by Dr. Miskanda in the afternoon. So you can see how through research and development we have been able to have uh, expand the application of palm oil and that helps to increase the demand. Whether it is mid fraction here on the first uh, paragraph that we mentioned or for non-food purposes uh, or biodiesel already alluded to earlier uh, these are not only current applications but also future opportunities uh, that will uh, be relevant when uh, proper assessment has been made to, to see how it can be applied to a particular uh, industry or country. Uh, but the palm oil supply, mainly from Malaysia, uh, I think would be the recognized source for all these potentials. Um, okay, so when we combine palm oil production and consumption, this is what we see. We have 53 world, uh, million tons of world palm oil production. And uh, many questions about how other countries can participate, but because these other countries don't have the weather and climatic condition to produce farm. Uh, current, currently, about 90% of this palm oil uh, is coming from Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, other countries, none of them has got a share of more than 3% each. So the third producer is way, way below in market share or production share. Um, well, oil and pets production again to emphasize the dominant role played by farm and in terms of export this makes it even more telling in the sense that uh, palm oil is an oil that can uh, can be produced in excess for the country for the producing country so that they can become uh, a major source for export. So it therefore captures more and more market share in the export uh, domain. You can see here by compared to 1990 at 36%, now it's already 56% of the market share is occupied by palm. And if you look at this chart, it is clearly shown on the left most countries of the world are net importers, meaning they don't produce enough and therefore they have to net import every year. These are, I would say, chronic net importers, meaning they have to import. Uh, EU, for example, uh, may be not so eager to talk about importing palm oil, but they are, as you can see, importing 8 million tons, net imports of vegetable oils and fats, and most of these would be palm. Because if you look on the right hand side of this chart, there are not so many available sources for uh, oils and fats uh, to be imported from. They can only be imported from these two countries, Malaysia and Indonesia, because they are the ones having net access or net export potential for the rest of the world on the left. So if you look at Argentina, Brazil and other sources, they are minor net 
exporters having minor excess of oils and fats. So they are not therefore uh, consistently rel uh, reliable suppliers if you like. Yeah. For example, Argentina is also hampered by the long distance before you can see uh, oil from Argentina to be imported uh, for local use and that is obviously not viable. Palm oil price discount versus soybean oil. Dr. James Fry has uh, explained in detail the price discounts. Palm oil, if you look at this chart and this chart, uh, it is always the case that palm oil is at a discount to soya and rapeseed. Again, telling us that uh, given equal opportunity, other things being equal, uh, it is better to buy palm. Uh, because this is uh, up to what 200, 250 US dollars per ton cheaper. So, if we look at the world oil and fat stock usage ratio, like all these green bars here, uh, they have been uh, consistent, early, uh, holding the, the the stock usage uh, level of. Uh, around 12% to 14% uh, of total, uh, well, that is the stock usage ratio. And therefore, as we see, slight increase in stock to usage ratio in 2012 led to prices uh, weakening or falling. And now we are projecting a stock usage ratio that is slightly better, meaning lower stock, uh, and therefore stock usage ratio is lower compared to last year, and we expect price to hold or to strengthen from the current levels, uh, represented by either the uh, blue chart or represented by the blue, which is the average that we think uh, the probable price trend coming up in the, uh, 2013. So that would be uh, slightly stronger than the current price level or thereabout. So uh, those of us who have heard about uh, the link allegation of the linkage between farm and use of agriculture land will be surprised to know that farm, oil farm is only using less than or about point, less than 0.3% actually 0.29% of world agriculture land. Although we are the dominant supplier of oils and fats, but palm oil uses 0.29% of world agriculture land. If you associate this with uh, use of land or use of forest land, this is nothing. 0.29%, not even 1% uh, of world agriculture land used by the oil farm industry in Malaysia, Indonesia, and the rest of the world. And in Malaysia alone, our oil farm, as mentioned, occupying 5 million hectares, uh, is only occupying 0.1% of world agriculture land. So all these who are an argument about palm oil taking away uh, precious rainforests or whatever would not uh, really be uh, validated. This, these are mere allegations and speculations. And the reason why we are dominant is palm oil is able to produce 11 times more oil per hectare per year than soybean oil, as you can see here. Uh, because palm oil, in addition to it, is also, the plant is also producing palm kernel oil. So many people do not take that into account, but we are talking about oils and fats. So one hectare of palm will produce two oils, palm oil and palm kernel oil, and combined together, it would probably be about 11 to 12 times more oil per hectare per year compared to soya. And that is before we introduce the opportunity to increase the yield by another 50%, uh, which is very easy to do. Most top plantations in Malaysia would re regularly produce 6 tons of oil per hectare per year. That would make the uh, yield to be 15 to 20 times more than soya per hectare per year. And 
That's why we are always able to offer a discount to Soya and we are always very competitive. So to repeat that, oil palm is the most efficient, effective and highest yielding among all vegetable oil produced. And as you can see from the chart, in brown is the land area. Farm on the left is 14 million hectares, producing 52 um, million or 53 million tons of oil. Whereas soya, the largest user of land for the oil seed, over 103 million hectares land use, is only producing less than farm of 42 million tons. So when it comes to food, uh, you can see the food index here plotted for 2012 as uh, being stable in price or slightly declining and oils and fats index is even declining a lot more last year, 2012. And that is because of temporary oversupply of farm, which I think Dr. Jim Fry has alluded to earlier, uh, that led to weakening of prices, but it stimulated a lot of export or imports by various consumers because cheaper price means uh, the right time to import and if you look at Vietnam, I'm trying to highlight that uh, with a GDP growth of 7.2% indicated here by this uh, uh, World Bank figure uh, the, the growth itself will stimulate demand and therefore, we are always optimistic that more palm oil and more, uh, will be consumed in Vietnam because of the uh, improvement in the economy. Uh, Malaysian exports, uh, 2012 was a slight dip because of uh, inability to clear our uh, stocks towards the end of 2012. But now, most of the stock would have been cleared and our stock figures are on the upward trend again. Uh, you can see uh, at your own time this chart where we tend to reduce our export during the second half of 2012 but uh, this is now uh, improving and our stock has come down as you can see in May, last column in, in yellow, the stock is back to normal. Uh, Vietnam oil central situation, you know all about it. but. Uh, with a population of 90 million, you are consuming 1.06 million tons of oils and fats, including animal fats. So this is a, a very healthy sign that uh, population expansion leads to oils and fats uh, consumption expansion as well. Uh, but production, unfortunately, uh, is not self-sufficient, and that's why we said at the beginning, you need to import 663 right at the bottom on the right, uh, indicating uh, your shortage that has to be supplemented by import. And this is the same thing, indicating your production against consumption and the gap. And uh, of course, everybody tries to uh, consume other, uh, the best oil they think uh, available in the market, like olive oil, the salad oils, uh, but over time people tend to adopt and adapt uh, to the various opportunities that palm oil can offer because as I also explained earlier, palm oil offers a whole range of product types, right from liquid salad oil, uh, red palm oil that you saw in, in the exhibition hall, to solid fats, so palm oil is offering you complete solution to all your fats uh, and oil requirements for different applications, a range of applications. So, uh, and therefore, I'm not surprised to see this chart that uh, Vietnam has responded to the opportunities provided by palm because palm is the dominant oil consumed as shown in this chart. So. Uh, there is room for improvement because at this level of consumption, the per capita consumption of vegetable oil is still below 10 kilograms. So that uh, means that we have to work harder to continue to promote as well as to uh, educate the consumers that uh, palm oil 
uh, this the right uh, solution to overcoming low, low consumption per capita because remember fat or vegetable oil is part of the dietary requirement. It's not bad to consume oil. It is necessary to consume oil. If, you're, if you don't consume enough oil, you don't have enough energy and your brain won't function. Uh, that is quite a statement, but it is true. Uh, Vietnam domestic oil consumption, uh, you can relook at this. Uh, as far as uh, uh, which one should be highlighted? I highlighted this vegetable oil component uh, earlier. Uh, the import component is significant and growing, so again, farm is the major uh, source that is used, imports. There will be some issue about the tax imposed to protect local refiners, but I think that can be sorted out. But what I want to quickly mention is that uh, some of the consumers may turn around to question the acceptance of farm from the nutritional aspect. And here we have a statement from American uh, uh, VIP or celebrity in the uh, opera show shown on television. This Dr. Oz is the consultant or personality often invited, doctor invited to participate in the opera, Winfrey Opera show. And, and he has now his own show and he has on his own uh, so-called assessment, uh, at the beginning of 2013, he came up with this statement to declare that uh, first miracle solution of 2013 in the food industry is red palm oil. Because red palm oil, according to him, has got so much uh, antioxidants, vitamins, and uh, goodness, it is a must that people should try and consume this, especially in America. But uh, we have gone further than that. We have taken out some of the vitamins contained in crude palm oil or red palm oil and packed these vitamins separately so you can talk to the agent, uh, sorry, the producer of vitamin here, he is around. Uh, if you are also interested in developing the vitamin business and consuming more palm oil vitamins, uh, there is an opportunity to follow this, uh, the goodness of the palm oil vitamin E, corticotrinols, in our website. Uh, lectures given by prominent scientists uh, in recent seminars, they are all on our website that you can follow. And what it says is that this vitamin E from palm oil helps stabilize or preserve your brain cells from deteriorating or aging. And that has a lot of implications when you have your brain cells conserved or preserved rather than deteriorating uh, uh, unnecessarily fast with the protection of uh, palm vitamin E. Okay, so the next uh, good thing is that uh, we have done research and we have blended uh, in this research, promoted the use of blended palm oil with local oils, 50-50% blend, and by Looking at the research results, we showed that this blend will help improve the good to the bad cholesterol ratio. And that improvement in cholesterol ratio is uh, approved to be put on labels by the FDA, uh, US Food and Drug Authority, on products containing palm oil sold under this brand in the US. And therefore, this is the ultimate assurance that palm oil is highly acceptable nutritionally because in combination with local oils, 50-50 blend uh, and patented claim approved by the FDA, it helps improve your cholesterol ratio. The reason why people don't like palm oil or alleged to be bad is it, it saturates, higher saturates and it will have, it will increase your cholesterol. But this study shows palm oil blended with local oil will improve your cholesterol ratio. In other words, increasing the uh, good HDL cholesterol and reducing the bad LDL cholesterol so that the ratio will be improved. Another major study 
and this is not one, but probably another study as well here shown, is that palm oil has similar cholesterol response compared to olive oil or canola oil or rapeseed oil. So this again is an internationally published study and you can't go wrong in consuming palm olive because it will have cholesterol response similar to olive oil. And olive oil is more or less the gold standard uh, of oils and fats around the world. Mediterranean uh, diet is highly based on olive oil. So if olive oil is considered good, palm oil as shown in this is equivalent to olive oil in cholesterol response. So palm olive, in this case, is therefore equally good, but one tenth the price of olive oil. So I think it's easy to derive conclusion which one you should buy. Uh, when on equal goodness basis, it is uh, much, much uh, cheaper. Things that are taken for granted, like frying uh, operation, we fry a lot. But actually, frying is declared by the National Academy of Sciences in, in the UK as one of the top 20 innovations in the food industry. You see, we have to innovate and we have to make things work. Frying is the best way to deliver food to the population. And here you will know that palm oil, because of its stable, uh, sorry, uh, low level of polyunsaturated fatty acids, it is very stable. The red bar on the top shows the uh, active oxygen method uh, Oxi oxidative stability of palm oil is the longest, 51 hours and, and so on, compared to other oils which, has, which have shorter rate bars, if you like. So stability is important in frying, and palm oil is the most popular uh, oil to be used in frying in instant noodles, for example. Again here showing how the frying life or stability uh, oxidative stability of various oils are compared and palm oil, palm olive is way, way uh, high or further in terms of stability uh, in, uh, in, in, in frying operations and so on. So palm olive is superior to peanut for deep frying oil. Uh, you have peanut but you can see uh, when we do the studies again palm olive is much superior in terms of oxidative stability or even in foaming index. Uh, there are so many fractions of palm. You have to uh, work with us uh, to choose which of these fractions would suit you. What happens when a population is exposed to consuming palm oil for more than 20 years? Uh, maybe you are in, coming into that category and people may be worried what has been the long-term impact of consuming palm oil consistently over 20 years. We did research and we have to use Malaysian population to do the research because we have been consuming palm oil for more than 20 years. And we took people aged 40 or thereabout because from 20 to 40 years old they have been consuming palm oil for 20 years. And we look at their uh, pattern of consumption through, they have been consuming mostly palm uh, all these years. And we are worried that consuming palm may affect your uh, coronary heart uh, status, what they call CVD, coronary vascular disease index, may be at risk. But did we see an increase in risk? Well, risk to coronary heart disease is measured by the uh, amount of small HDL, uh, low density lipoprotein, that is most atherogenic, most uh, sensitive indicator of coronary heart disease. And did we see a uh, risk increment in this population selected to represent 20 years of consumption of palm oil? The result shows not significant. There is no increase in risk for population consuming palm for the last 20 years like this sample that we studied in Malaysia. In fact, uh, to show that the
statistic is responding. When we correlate these statistics of risk, indicated by small LDL particle, uh, it is correlated with carbohydrate consumption. In other words, over-consuming of carbohydrate, the type of carbohydrate and so on, will have developed uh, what they call ex extra sugar diabetes and so on. The, the, the risk factor for coronary heart disease will increase based on carbohydrate correlation, but not with palm oil uh, consumption. So that more or less assures us again, uh, as a supplier of palm oil to the world, that our palm oil is not doing any harm. In fact, it's doing a lot of good. Uh, so there is no correlation when we talk about small LDL uh, palm oil, sorry, uh, with palm oil consumption here. So in conclusion, Malaysia will be the source of affordable, healthy, and sustainable supply of oils and fats to Vietnam. I mentioned at the start that we should be taken as a solution provider. Palm oil is part of the solution. Consumers get a strategic solution from palm oil, either in terms of food security, self -sufficient, uh, food sufficiency, functionality of the ingredients in your manufacturing process, trans-free products that is already now an issue in US and Europe, and competitive prices. The dominance of palm oil, in fact, is an assurance to me because uh, palm oil continues to be an attractive long-term commodity for producers to continue to produce and consumers to continue to consume because of its dominant source of supply. And Vietnam continues to rely on imported crude uh, and, and refined oils to meet consumer demand, although domestic, domestic crude soybean oil production is increasing with their two crushing plants. Um, in 2012, Vietnam imported a lot of uh, refined oils as well. Um, but nevertheless, I think uh, the conclusion here is that uh, there will be a continuing uh, trend of increasing imports uh, because uh, tariff issues can be sorted out. So foreign exchange can be saved by using palm oil that is cheaper than other edible oil. Everybody wants to save foreign exchange, uh, economize on the, not inflating the economy. So uh, palm oil is a safe part of the solution. And this is shown by the fact that current price of palm oil is US 200, 250 US dollars per ton compared to soybean and other equivalent oils and fats. Thank you very much for the uh, uh, attention. Uh, we continue to emphasize these points like being very versatile, uh, natural and trans-free ingredients. But what I want to say here is this paper will be uploaded on www.mpoc.org.my and there you can also see my blog and my tweet which is a uh, an extension of my uh, ability to influence you why you should be buying palm oil. Thank you very much.